two ducks up here for sure. There's usually some kill deer in this uh, waterway. Let's see if they'll let me get close. I'm still at a low shutter speed. And I'm going to change my focal to wide open instead of spot metering. That way if they fly, I can really blur their wings with this slow shutter speed. I don't know if you can see them or not. They both come out and they're in the middle of that water. Now, first thing you want to take note of is which way is the wind blowing? The wind is actually blowing away from me. I see another bird sitting over here. There's a shrike. That shrike is sitting there. And if I walk in a slow, deliberate zigzag pattern, he might. There go the ducks, and they're coming back to us. So. Widen out, zoom in, blur the image. So meanwhile, we have this shrike sitting here. And right now he's got all those bushes behind him. Whereas if I can walk to my left without him flying, he'll actually have the sky behind him, which makes for a better background. than those trees because that will make them stand out. And there he is. And he's just a looking at me. Get over here in the soft stuff for you. I'm surprised he's really letting me get this close. I'm going to up my shutter speed some because with that white background I know I'll have the opportunity if he flies to actually get a picture of him flying. So I look at my meter and I say, hey, my ISO is at 500. Well, if I step it up to 2,000, I actually have an ISO of 1,000. I can deal with that. Now I'm going to walk back over here, run this zigzag pattern. There he goes. He didn't let me get any closer. Say, so you want to go slow? I like coming out in these uh, river bottoms uh, like this, looking for footprints. Seeing what other animals have been out here. Like I say, we have the javelinas, deer, wading birds, coyotes. There's quite a few coyotes out here. I see some birds moving way down the end, but I think they're just crackles. Let's see that crosses without getting my foot cut. Didn't do such a good job. It's soaking wet. <laughs> the wife's gonna say, "You can leave them shoes outside." Got a slight mist coming in. Yeah. A lot of times these river bottoms like this are also good for ibis. So it helps to know what type of animals are in the area that you might spot and what to look for. And if you know what type, ooh, there goes a greater Kiskadee. I missed him altogether. Like I say, sometimes when you find one bird, you'll find several others. There goes a Shrike. Greater Kiskadee would, would be a nice find. Let me walk back over this way because I've already come this far. This is Highway 77 over here. It's quite noisy, especially at nighttime. All the trucks seem to be running down to McAllen and Brownsville from 
up in Houston, it looks like. There he goes. That's that greater Kiskadee. We have a kill deer and we have a bunch of vultures taking lifting up. And that kill deer is sitting right in there. There's actually two of them. I really like the brown on the patch that they have on their back. Their tail feathers when they show them. I'll take a shot and look at my ISO again. I'm 2000. F9 at two thousandths of a second. Which is not bad considering I'm shooting with a 1.4 extender. Alright, the first thing you want to do when you see these birds, besides see what they're up to, is see as if you can get down, get to their level, where you're actually shooting, looking them in the eye instead of looking down on them. When you do this, it brings the background up instead of the dirt behind them, and that way, it makes the bird stand out more. Now I'm going to take a picture of this guy, and then I'm going to stand up. Take a picture of the guy, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So anytime you can get down and get the sky, or a far away structure, or shrubbery, or something that's a distance from you, it's going to make the bird stand out and pop more than when you're up close and shooting a bush right behind them. <laughs> 